Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. All right, gray market pieces here. This is a 2021 white gold meteorite dial GMT Master II. Right here is another GMT Master II that says maker overhaul. So overhauled by RSC. It says it's a rare model. And uh, this is a Z serial. So this would be from 2006, 2007. You can see the paper papers to the left. I got to question the utility of that bezel, but not only that's why you pay nearly $100,000 for this watch. For the utility, no, because of the F-off factor. There you can see the RSC card all the way to the left. If you're curious about the noise in the background, I'm at an airport, so that explains it. Now this is a white gold GMT Master II, beautiful blue dial, and I guess it's the, um, well, slightly lesser counterpart to that meteorite dial. Although if you want something a little bit more legible, I guess this would work. Here's a first generation discontinued BLNR back when you could only get them on the Oyster bracelet. You see the lack of the coronet between the Swiss made at the six. Unlike this one, this is the newer version, greater power reserve, newer movement, uh, the Chronergy escapement. This is 2000 USD more, which would I prefer? Well, that's a lot of money to pay for a, you know, a newer version, but you would be able to get this bracelet option. So this would be the one that I would want. And uh, here it is on the Jubilee bracelet. And here is the much more expensive Pepsi. The Pepsis go for quite a bit more. And I think that's because of the color scheme, the iconic blue and red of those original GMTs back in 1954. And speaking of those original GMTs, uh, this one works like that. Uh, the hour hand and the 24 hour hand don't separate. This is an A serial. It's got a Swiss made dial, just like mine, except for that Swiss made dial. So this would be, ah, gosh, a couple months earlier than mine and this is a beautiful example stay tuned you're gonna see the very same watch for 4,000 more in an upcoming video here's an all black uh, this is a discontinued model and the end of the monocolor GMTs here's a little bit more of that 16700 with the Swiss only dial now that tag on the right says in kanji last of the production run and sure enough those a serial 16700s were the last the kanji to the right of the price tag on this all black says, used item, beautiful condition. To the left is another ceramic all black. Now that kanji says something like, you know, 2019 stamp. So perhaps this was sold in 2019. Again, another one in beautiful condition. This is, uh, I guess, stamp 2020. So perhaps those were kind of like new old stock pieces. I don't know. I think they ended a little bit earlier than that, but uh, quite a few all blacks here. And the prices on these are expensive, especially if you've kept track of the, the dip and the history, but they still don't seem to get the love that you'd think they would be in a discontinued model. Check out the beautiful wood grain here. Uh, the floor's a little bit stained, but you know, drool from the punters happens. All right, so here's a Submariner, a solid yellow gold bluesy, and this is a brand new 2021 model. You can see the Cornette at the six and expensive, yes, but not compared to the premiums percentage wise of some of the steel pieces. Same could be said of this. Um, by the way, I don't even know what the nickname on this says, but uh, this goes retail for 4,400,000 yen. So it's got a premium of about 12,000 USD and you know, it's not like double or triple of something like a GMT Master II Pepsi. Here's the older version. Now, this is the Smurf. Now, the Smurf prior to its discontinuation was going on the gray market for 4,500,000 yen. So it really hasn't gone up that much since it was discontinued. All right, here's a first generation ceramic no date sub. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how the prices fare on these first generation subs compared to the modern ones. You know, a lot of people are going to say, first generation ceramic subs that are going to be collectible. That's true. All Rolex watches are collectible, but which would you rather have? You know, if you're talking modern, well, if I'm talking modern, I'd rather go as modern as possible. The 3-2 movement, the increased power reserve, just all the upgrades and really the better aesthetics, the better lugs. But I expect you'll hear sellers play up the first of the first status of these ceramic subs. And this is a 16610 with the aluminum bezel insert. It's got paper papers. This is an S serial from 9394 tritium dial. Of course, holes case and uh, look at that fat force. This probably is an original insert. And of course, the hollow in link bracelet. This is the 16610 LV. 
Again, paper, papers. This looks like a D serial, I think. D serials, uh, 2005, 2006. And uh, wow, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, something that I really didn't appreciate um, until, well, the rest of the world did. And yeah, um, this doesn't have the engraved rehot. And I think that's probably what I would go for. I think the ones without the engraved rehot, I think those are going to be a little bit more collectible. I like them more. I'm not a fan of the engraved rehot. Not really. Now check this out. This is $1,000 cheaper than that previous piece. It's an earlier piece, 2002, 2003, and it's got a fat four. Why is it cheaper? My guess, no papers. That really affects the value. And uh, yeah, look at that. So what would you rather have? A non-fat four with papers or a fat four without the papers? For me, I definitely want papers for this kind of piece. And it's a real shame that this fat four doesn't have the papers that's so key. All right, so here's a pre-ceramic no-date sub, 14060M. This is getting towards the end of the production run. This is a V serial from 2009. You see it's got the engraved rehot and it's got box and papers. Pretty cool piece and, you know, arguably more collectible than your typical 14060 or 14060M. For me, I could do without the rehot and I prefer the pre-ceramic no-date subs to have two lines, but still seriously a cool piece and, you know, for those that like that extra text. This probably isn't that bad of a buy, to be honest. I think you'll see this going for a lot more in the future. This two-tone ceramic sub with a diamond dial, I guess you'd call that a sturdy dial, is relatively speaking a little bit rare, but I'm not sure it makes it any more desirable. I guess it depends on the culture. This is gonna be a little bit easier to flip probably because it doesn't have the diamond dial. This is perhaps a little less wearable, but I think a little bit more popular. And you see the paper papers. This is an F serial, 2003, 2004, 2005. Beautiful pre-ceramic bluesy. I love bluesies, but pre-ceramic bluesies are really something with that iridescent bezel insert. So this is a beautiful piece. I'm not sure it's me, but if I were going to go two-tone, I'd probably go pre-ceramic two-tone bluesy or root beer GMT. Now this is just like that diamond dial sub we were just looking at earlier, but this is a little bit more expensive. It's a little newer. This is a G serial from 2010. The one before was a V serial from 2009. Here's a contemporary ceramic sub. Interesting to note the price. This is only a thousand dollars less than that sturdy dial we saw. Now, of course this is newer. So do you wanna pay a thousand dollars more for a previous sturdy dial sub or a thousand dollars less for one without the diamonds? but newer. Hmm. Tough question there. And here is the black counterpart to that contemporary bluesy we just saw. This is about a thousand dollars less. Bluesies go for more. They're, you know, more eye-catching, more desirable, but this is going to be a little bit more low-key, maybe more wearable with more stuff. Here's the 43 millimeter Red Sea Dweller. Will the Red Sea Dweller be discontinued? You know, are they going to get rid of the red? And what's going to happen to this piece if they do? Of course, the James Cameron. People say that's on the chopping block too. I don't know. I don't think they can continue it forever, but I'll be surprised to see it go. Now, here's a cool watch. This is a transitional sea dweller. It's still 40 millimeters. It doesn't have the Cyclops, but it's got the ceramic. They made this for just like three or four years. If you had bought this a couple years ago, I mean, it was money in the bank. I mean, we all knew it at the time. And sure enough, you can see that price. And this is a box and papers piece. Great piece to end on. More to come. Thanks for watching. Take care. Let me know what you liked. I'll see you next time.